Uh, welcome, everyone. This is our first voice AMA at Sommelier. I'm super pumped. Uh, uh, before, we've done text AMAs, um, and this is voice. So welcome to Sommelier's first voice L AMA. This is our LP Rewards AMA. And as you know, we do the LP Rewards AMA for the top pools on Uniswap that reward Sommelier LPs for taking a position and adding liquidity. So this is really a great liquidity story. And today we have Insure Ace with us and we have Dan from Insure Ace. Uh, and what we want to do is, you know, Dan, I'll ask to give an introduction, but I'll just give you guys a quick agenda. What's going to happen is Dan's going to tell us about Insure Ace. It's a new pool. They're doing some new things. And we really were impressed with the pool performance um, for the liquidity providers. We think that says something about the project. And what we want to do is have Insure Ace share a little bit about how they work, uh, how they came about it. And then we're going to ask questions from the community. Uh, we're going to see your questions and answer them. We're going to jump in and try to answer the best of them. Uh, we don't have any LP rewards for this AMA, unfortunately. However, uh, Insurace has an amazing staking program that uh, we'd love to have them talk more about so that folks can take a look as they see and explore the Insurace project. So Dan, welcome to LP Rewards AMA. And uh, please, uh, how are you doing? And uh, is this your first voice AMA over Telegram? There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh hi guys thanks for having me um yeah i we actually do a lot more um i say voice and video i think because it's just easy to easy to record and yeah uh post somewhere afterwards and it's uh you know it's it it's gives a bit more personal touch to sometimes a bit more um you know anonymous uh anonymous culture um yeah so i've just uh recently um joined up with Iris as the director of marketing and business development and it's it's an incredible it's such an incredible project i mean it's the space is enormous the um the potential is huge and you know we've got one of the best products out there so just to give a bit of background insurers is a uh, DeFi insurance protocol um with an initial listing of 20 different protocols that we can insure against and um one of the you know the sort of best view, um or the best products on the market for this for the space so as a bit wider the um current sort of tvl the current tvl in, in DeFi is roughly about 60 billion dollars um which is insane considering it's less than one billion but just over a year ago uh, so there's a huge amount of money coming in but uh, something like less than two percent of that's actually covered through any form of insurance now you know we all think that uh blockchain and DeFi is a lot more secure than a lot of things but at the same time there are still problems that can happen there are hacks there are bugs there are private keys lost all the time and you know last year alone there was 120 million worth of hacks in DeFi alone and in the last two weeks i think i've seen something like 110 million in the last two weeks through um easy fine network and uh, uranium finance both get having hacks very very recently one for 66 million and one for 50, uh, 50 million dollars which is crazy and you know these these are these were insurable risks they just weren't insured so they're having to be covered by their founders by their investors and i think that uh, only affects confidence in those platforms and it gives them such a huge knockback and it's just so unfortunate whereas having some sort of insurance to cover them would have made such a difference um, at least for confidence and even we're seeing you know any protocols that are covered through like in, not even just through insurance but through some sort of DeFi insurance in the market in general do increase their value you know by a few percent just because of the you know, one extra thing that uh, boosts confidence in their protocol and their product and their team i think it's going to be the next um uh the next sort of tick in that checkbox of finding good projects to back you know uh auditing has become such a big thing now for DeFi projects you know it's like if somebody hasn't had an audit it's you know it's it seemed as you know not professional whereas and even now you know you need two or three um uh two or three different audits sometimes just to sort of prove that you you've really you know done the research into into your products and into your team to make sure that you know you are as low risk as possible and i think insurance onto DeFi protocols will be the next step in that um and it will become the, the norm so yes yeah, so it's such a huge market such a huge potential um we are currently from what i can believe um 
with with an actual live product, the sec uh, second uh, largest in the uh, DeFi insurance space. Um, but we only just launched our mainnet on Monday, which is the exciting news for this week, and also uh, why we've just been um, absolutely crazy this week getting everything out. So we launched our mainnet on Monday uh, with staking options, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and then our insurance services launched on Tuesday. So a very busy week all around. Um, uh, you know, we started with initial 20 protocols on our insurance coverage. And, you know, the, the reason that insurance has such great potential in the market to, you know, eat up some of the market share that is currently occupied by uh, Nexus Mutual is that, well, A, it's a huge market, huge space, and not um, there's not that many other people with live products right now. But also, you know, our, our model revolves around a port portfolio style of insurance. So you can insure multiple protocols at the same time, which actually ends up costing you up to 60% less on your premium and up to 50% less on your, on your gas fees as well. So by insuring everything at the same time, you know, it spreads that risk out and also reduces your premium and gas fees, which makes it a lot, you know, much, much cheaper. Also, we are permissionless. Um, so there's no KYC on our on our um, on our protocol unlike um nexus and so yeah i mean the the potential for the space for that is, is for us is is huge it just it, it fits in I and mean, even just today we just announced a uh partnership with latentry which will hopefully allow us to continue to be um permissionless while allowing some form of identity um staking uh, identity token to come through uh for for individual users if they so wish um, staking wise, so we have, yeah, we launched our main end on Monday. Sorry, I'm rambling on a little bit here, but um, we launched our, our staking on, on our main end on Monday with six initial stakes. So you've got USDT, USDC, Insure Token, DAI, ETH, and WETH as well. And we've started with six initial ones just to get our initial liquidity up. So we've got an initial staking cap of $20 million. Uh, we are already around 75% of that, which is incredible for a week. I mean, we hit, you know, the first 25% in the first hour and the first 50% in the first like 12 hours. So we're at 75% now and the benefits right now. So this is why we haven't, you know, um, provided any LPs today because it's just allowing the sommelier community to have access to our uh, initial staking and uh, become awareness so become aware of it because our, our current yields for this initial stake are some are above 50 percent apy you know it's, it's a huge yield um it's probably it, again it, it varies but it, it can be as high as you know 100 apy and that's going to fill up very very quickly like i said it's been less than five days since we launched that we're already at 75 percent. i don't know how much longer it's going to be until we actually hit that initial cap once we hit that cap, it allows us to sort of stress test our net our protocol and really, you know, drive some uh, our insurance products before releasing the cap and going on with our continued staking, which again will still be higher than the average um, yield in this in this space, uh, and it will be between thirty to fifty percent APY uh, going forward after our initial staking cap. So that's that's where we're at with insurance right now, and it's like I said, it's very very exciting. All things go and. Um, you know, uh, my 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 week has been filled with announcements. You know, pretty much on a daily basis, and just keeping the community up to date. And we, you know, our, our community is fantastic, and there's a lot of support everywhere. And you know, if you guys do get a chance, do check us out on our Telegram and our Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, show some support, show some love. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations, and um, you know, I think uh, well done. Um, you know, we. When we saw Insure Ace pop up on our seven-day Uniswap pool performance, um, we were we were impressed because we we hadn't seen a lot of uh, uh, cover protocols or you know insurance protocols show up. So we really wanted to reach out and hear more about this story. I think insurance uh, and in decentralized insurance is suddenly exploding, and like you said, a large large market opportunity. Um, you know, currently if you go to CoinGecko and you look at the insurance players. Um, in terms of 24-hour trading volume, um, Insure Ace is, you know, uh, for just 24 hours, so, you know, it shouldn't be much, but it's just a really impressive for a new project that just launched on Tuesday. You're currently already outpacing volume on Armor, um, Title Finance Union, and others that um, have been around for quite some time. Uh, and, um, you know, volume uh, third only to Nexus and Cover. So what is it like? I mean, Nexus cover, you know, these have been some really, you know, top tier projects in the space. 
Um, why is InsureAce attracted such interest in your view? So that's a great question. I mean, uh, Nexus has got the sort of first mover advantage. You know, they're, they're the big guys that have been around for a while, um, huge market cap and, you know, a lot of interest in the big community. We think they have a, a few intrinsic flaws, but that allows us to develop a more nimble product uh, at the end of the day to you know, take on that market. Um, Cover, I think, have had a huge disadvantage. And this, is, this comes back to what we're talking about, about you know, hacks affecting people's confidence. And Cover you know, had, the, had a big hack last year, and that's caused them to slip down and also you know, given a bit of confidence shaking to um, exchanges like Binance, uh, who had to basically uh, pay out the, um, the hack amount to investors and users um which again i mean cover should have been covered through a different insurance protocol to be honest but that's <laughs> there's no irony there in reinsurance um well our volume at the moment yeah we've got a lot of buzz i mean we've, we've got huge backers uh, between uh Huobi, uh Huobi labs we've got um hashed um and De uh, defiance capital all behind us and I think, you know, the awareness in especially the Asian markets, because it's, you know, our team's based out of Singapore, they're, you know, they're, they've been heavily involved in the crypto community between China and Singapore for the last the last year. Um, so now it's really getting that buzz to everyone else and communicating in a, in, a, in a nice, clear way and explaining all these different amazing partnerships we've got coming up. So we've really got a lot of buzz generating right now um because we're talking about a lot more um than next and, and cover i mean covers that's like i said still recovering from their their insurance hack their, their hack uh nexus are the biggest i uh, they've their governance and their you know I, I mean, we don't really even really see them as competition because the market's so big and we we offer different products at the end of the day but you know they, they fit into the same category so we are chasing their tail we are you know we have this opportunity to catch up because yeah, in our in our view, we have a superior product, and and for you know a lot cheaper. You know, it's going to be a lot more affordable um, for a lot of a lot of investors to you know invest, uh, ensure their protocols, and ensure their um, ensure their assets with us. Um, because yeah, like I said, they're starting at sixty percent, and then you know with our our model of our, our investment, we have this. Um, sorry, I'll be a bit more clear about this. So. Uh, the second half of our business model is not only just getting the premiums from um, insurance coverage, but also our investment model. Now, because of the way we're set up, it means that our investment model can be a lot more effective, a lot more efficient than the one that Nexus currently, you know, currently employs. Their investment returns are something between you know three to seven to ten percent annually. Our investment returns we're looking at a lot, lot higher than that, which only feeds back into lower premiums and also into rewarding people even people who insure with us not just the stakers not just our in our, our insurance backers and our finances but also our you know people we actually insure will be getting extra rewards in our insurance or insurance token uh, that they can um you know basically at, at the end of the day brings their net cost right down so that's that's how we plan to really you know attack this market you know we've there's not that many live insurance protocols out. There's a few, you know, people developing right now. You've got Unslashed uh, raising a few, um, few million dollars the last few months, and with you know with a really strong team behind them, and they'll be coming out fairly soon. So for now, it's just we've we've got this this little lull, this little window where it's us and Nexus, and you know we we have a superior product at a lower price. So it's now it's just raising awareness and um, yeah, just doing. Things like this, engaging with different communities, building our own community, and 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 chasing up as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I want to uh, just take a segment to you know ping in on the uh, on your liquidity pools on Uniswap. Uh, first question I have is: you have two liquidity pools on Uniswap. You have one for USDC and one for ETH. I think the ETH liquidity pool launched this Monday, right? But the USDC pool has been around for some time. Uh, yeah, so we, that was there from our um, one of our initial drops a, a while ago. Um, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in all reality, I mean, it, it wasn't heavily publicized. It was just it was just live. It was there for right. um, something that, that was above and beyond my knowledge of uh, why that works. But it's uh, <laughs> there. That's all right. That, right. I know that was live for a while. Um, yeah. No, the, the main one where we started from essentially zero again was from this Monday across those six um, different uh, pools. So yeah, like ETH, WETH, uh, 
USDT, USDC, DAI, and um, the insure token. Got it. Got it. Excellent. And I think maybe my question is: You guys launched that in Uniswap V2, um, where you know Uniswap V3 is launching on May 5th, which will make liquidity much more capital efficient uh, for pools. Um, have you guys thought about whether or not you will move to Uniswap your Uniswap V2 pools to Uniswap V3, and and will that have an impact on you know how liquidity providers interact um, and stake with insurers? So, I mean, the tech team is looking. Uh, this this comes part. Of, this comes under a part of our um, our wider plans for this year as well. So, mm-hmm. not only have we, you know, we're, we're looking into V three and seeing if it's if it's going to be beneficial to us and our and our stakers and our, and our holders, um, but you know, it forms part of our wider um, our, our wider scope for our growth into the market. You know, we're bringing out a BSC token um, at some point with a, a bridge to. Um, to pair up with our existing uh, ETH token, um, and you know, and then looking at other other e- ecosystems we can get into as well. You know, between um, you know Cosmos, Solana, if we can, um, just, yeah. just just to allow us to cover as many protocols as possible, not just not just those built on the Ethereum network. So Got it. E- e- V3, yeah, I mean, but it's it's you know until they actually launch and they bring it out, it's it's one of those things that's all. It sounds sounds very very good. It sounds great, but uh, until it, you know it's actually live and we can <laughs> and see it see how it works for ourselves properly, then it's um you know we're we're just going to take our time and focus on focus on our plan as as it stands for now. But it I yeah, mean yeah. by all by all sounds V three is that you know it should be should be something fantastic. So there's no reason we shouldn't migrate over. Yeah no and 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 your comments parallel other projects we've talked to. Um, you know, very much a wait and see, um, looking for reasons to move. I think one of the things about Sommelier, uh, having worked on V2, and, and we are working with the Uniswap V3 team to launch V3, is um, we really want to make sure that, uh, you know, liquidity providers are, are able to enjoy the advantages of capital efficient uh, liquidity, which means if you're, if you're staking and, and providing capital into an insurance pool, um, you know, you should be able to collect more fees um, and stake, you know, your LP tokens even um, more aggressively so that you can collect more revenues uh, for less capital. Uh, the question, of course, is, you know, for projects, um, you know, you know, whether or not having, um, you know, finding the price of the insurance token in a Uniswap pool in V3 given less capital efficiency um, is, is more effective. And we think it will be more effective. So folks can get to, you know, less slippage, less, less arbitrage um, or um, more opportunities to, to identify the correct price for insurers tokens in the Uniswap pools. And I think, um, you know, one of the things we'd love to do is keep in touch and share with you guys as, as like you said, you know, when it comes live, you know, want to know, you know, what is the value prop, how it works. Um, and and what is the impact for LPs? Um, I you know one of my thoughts are you know you said you were looking at other protocols. Um, <clears throat> I mean how and and looking outside the Ethereum space, um, super exciting stuff happening on on Binance uh, Smart Chain um, and as well as Solana. Um, are those uh, protocols on your roadmap for when 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 you're thinking and and um, is that something that you know folks can liquidity providers can look forward to things happening this year? Yeah, I mean, it's actually it's all coming along. Um, so we're hoping to have in the next quarter our, our BSC token um, launch and a token bridge built uh, for that alone. Other protocols we you know we're exploring. We're talking to different teams and we're seeing which ones are going to be best to focus on because you know it's uh, there's just <laughs> so many and the, the the guys have only got you know um, so many hours in the day. So for now we're focusing on the BSC. Um, so that's going to be the quickest and easiest ones build the bridge across um and actually do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to drop a uh 2021 roadmap into the group so you guys can uh view it for yourselves at some point yeah um, that's awesome. but yeah we've got uh so so many cool stuff and so many things happening this year i mean it's mm-hmm. i mean even the next sort of quarter yeah so we're uh increasing up to you know 60 60 plus protocols to, to cover yeah um, yep. Different cross-chain integrations, um, and then bringing out our, you know, our our second version of our existing mainnet. Once we essentially stress tested everything and allowed for these various different protocols to be uh, covered, so it's you know yep. everything should be upgraded um, again in a 
by about September, which is, you know, yeah. the guys are, you know, they're, they're, it's amazing how, how well they work and how fast they're, they're building all this. Yep. So a quick question for you and, and speaking of, you know, and, 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 um, you know, following up on that question and, and, and wrapping it in, uh, you know, at the beginning, we, you know, we did note that, you know, cover, um, had some issues and Nexus had some issues. Um, what, you know, is, what is the technical sort of changes or, um, technical advantages that insurance has that will allow it to avoid either some of these risk issues on the risk side or the technology risk issues um, that you know some of the other yeah. protocols um, have seen. So, I mean, it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword on this one because we um, we're not open source, uh, partly for well, two two main reasons, partly to uh, keep our protocol secure against. Um, Against hack attempts, while we're while we're sort of just getting started to avoid that risk of, um, you know, bad reputation from someone having access to the code to be able to find um, uh, find some weaknesses. So we are, we you know, we're, we're doing a few um, uh, essentially hack tests against against our system just to test it all up. Um, so that's that's the first thing. Uh, the second reason. Um, are you testing yourself, or you have an outside firm testing for you? Uh, both. So I think it's, oh, okay. uh, it's cool. we've got an outside firm, but also we've, we've got someone who's been brought in just to you know really really go at it as a sort of contractor. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is to you know we we just launched again our, our products you know is 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 a superior product and they you know to avoid just having a, a quick fork and having someone else bring out an identical um, protocol in the next you know few weeks we've uh, kept it kept it away so. Yeah, I mean, um, start with cover. I mean, they were very unfortunate with their hack, and it's. I mean, no, no, no one wants a hack, right? So, it's always unfortunate. But it, it was just they were the first ones to really have a you know get listed with Binance and um, and have a that sort of a, a good partnership agreement with Binance, um, even though they you know obviously launched off the back of um, Yearn Finance, and they I think that that shook confidence in insurance protocols because you know if you're an insurance protocol and you're the one that gets hacked then it's um you know it's a, there, there's an irony there it's just very very unfortunate so um it's i think uh you know that, that that's just a big reputation thing i don't think there's anything particularly wrong with what they their products and what they brought out i think it's just you know very very unfortunate for their um for their uh, for the uh user confidence um nexus yeah, it's been big. They've just had that first mover, but it also means they've become a bit clunky and a bit slow about you know um, developments. And um, you know, the, they've got a huge uh, market cap already. Um, but a lot of their because they are f like fully decentralized with some you know governance issues that come with that that um, mean that they actually don't, don't ever really pay out for quite a lot of their claims, which can be difficult as well. So there's um you know there's a few few smaller things. Um, but I think that we can, we've, we've addressed a lot of them and, uh, you know, we've got a super strong white paper if you guys want to check that out at some point um, that sort of goes into the, the details of uh, how that all operates and, and, and why, uh, why the tech that we've built is um, a superior product as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I absolutely think, um, you know, there's much to be learned from those who've gone before you. Um, so, um, you know, we all, you know, uh, as you say, when rubber hits the road, you know, um, you know, the, the level of preparation will be questioned. Uh, will be the question, and I'm sure that insurers will make sure that its LPs and, and users are protected, not only from the lessons of those before, but as you guys are already currently, you know, testing and and securing your your protocol as well as your your keys today. So um, you know, keep up the good work. And it's a dark forest out there. Um, so you know. Um, I'm sure that uh, folks, we you know, particularly familiar LPs, we're looking to, you know, learn more about how uh, insurance continues to, you know, secure, you know, its uh, resources um, against both, you know, what we say, um, you know, coverage risk as well as as well as technology risk. So, you know, I mean, best of luck and uh, congrats on all you guys have done so far. I think um, we are. I think it's a good time to maybe hit up questions, Mario. Um, what do you think? Are we are we good to do some questions from the community? Right. And while you go ahead. 
No, I was just saying, um, I was going to say anybody who's listening, um, you can see Insure Ace on Sommelier um, at app.sommelier.finance. Uh, and um, our, you know, check out our 24 hour top pools and our seven day top pools. Um, we, you know, Sommelier does not endorse the pools that we see. What we do is just surface the pools that have uh, what we look at as, you know, price appreciation, highest performance, as well as value for liquidity providers prior to staking. Um, also check out our telegram uh, that uh, insurance has brought up and linked. Dan has been kind to link uh, the staking uh, opportunities. They are not going to last. And as we know, it's staking. Um, it's always best to be early. So we want to encourage everybody to take a look and you know see if the staking opportunities are fit for them. All right, so what are we doing with questions, Mario? Uh, yeah, no, I was trying to figure that one out myself. I mean, if it's LP postponed or, uh, hang on, let's, uh, yeah, I've got another one. <laughs> That's a great question. All right. Uh, so uh, just to remind everyone, and if you've been listening this long, wow, you're amazing. This is about 30 minutes, and this is great. Uh, Sommelier is a Cosmos SDK chain uh, based on Cosmos Stargate, um, which uh, Zaki Manian uh, and the Cosmos team launched uh, in 2020 and released. So uh, Sommelier out of the gate does not have uh, in uh, at Simili, our first focus will be gravity to Ethereum, uh, and that's where um, you know we'll be working first and foremost with Uniswap uh, and Uniswap V3 Dex. Uh, Uniswap is is currently by TVL the largest Dex in the world and continues to show strength. Um, so our focus will be there. However, uh, we love the gravity Dex. I myself am participating in the gravity Dex. Uh, competition uh, this week, uh, trading competition. So I'm going to test my might against other cosmonauts. Um, we're very close to the Cosmos ecosystem, so we fully intend that uh, you can expect to see a sommelier interface with the Gravity Dex very, very soon. Uh, and uh, it should be an exciting opportunity for us uh, because it should be a very, very low lift. So um, focus right now, Uniswap v3, future on the Gravity Dex, Definitely interesting and definitely something we will participate in. Um, yeah, I think I've found um, a bit of information on it. So it's uh, it's on it's basically based on balancer. So it's um, uh, we did an initial launch for our token um uh the, so i think the model changed i think we i think initially uh, very early on we were planning on doing a you know lbp with balancer and i think that's been um i mean it hasn't been raised the question as, uh, while i've been around so it's either been postponed or cancelled um I mean, I know we're, we're working with balancers, so maybe there is something coming up there. But for now, we I don't really have the answer. But it's a great one for our tech guys, and I will I will get them to fill me in, and I will reply to um, uh, Vyacheslav myself another time. That's a great question. Uh, wow. All right. Somebody's actually been 
paying attention, <laughs> really digging deep into our plans for your swap P3. Uh, awesome question. Great, great, great question. Yes. So uh, the, the NFTs on Uniswap V3 um, are now the representations or previously in Uniswap V2, your LP positions were represented by your ERC20 token. Well, in Uniswap V3, that is no longer the, the case. Your Uniswap positions uh, are now represented by an NFT, or we call it, Uniswap will call it an NFLP, a non-fungible liquidity position. Uh, sommelier is your non-fungible liquidity position automation friend. When it comes to moving your positions around so that you can collect the most revenue and the most profits on Uniswap uh, V3, Somalia wants to make sure that you don't have to do anything except sit back, relax, and count your money. Uh, the great opportunity is that that uh, the NFTs um, from Uniswap will now require active management, and that's going to be tough and difficult for most folks who you know have to look through you know thousands of you know opportunities like Insure Ace. You're going to need someone and a partner who's going to just take that pain away and make life easy. And that's what we're going to do. So we at Similia are working very hard to make sure that we can actively help manage the Uniswap V3 NFTs, um, whether, you know, Insure Ace and other cover protocol type uh, pools move over to Uniswap V3. We want to be there to make sure it's easy to manage your positions accordingly. Okay, who's ask, who's asking these questions? Is this somebody from the team? <laughs> you guys are like planting these questions. <laughs> okay, uh, yes. So Samilia is a love letter to validators. If you are a validator um, in the uh, you know any in the cryptocurrency space uh, in any proof of stake chain, uh, we love you. And validators are going to power Samilia because we are essentially the decentralized automation layer for Ethereum. Uh, so what's exciting is, yes, there will be uh, a test net. Um, I can't say if it's incentivized or not, but it will be interesting. Um, we already have the month that we've selected for planned. And um, please stay on our Discord, stay in this Telegram, uh, look out for alerts, follow our Twitter, some finance. Uh, if you're a validator, you want to be part of the coming incentivized and public test nets. Uh, I'll, why don't I uh, do a quick wrap up with my thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Dan, uh, for coming on. Congratulations to Insure Ace on the launch, on the pools that you launched, as well as the unique and innovative model in the in crypto insurance space. Uh, uh, may your you know team continue to see volumes continue to trade on your token, as well as projects continue to adopt your coverage offers um, to protect the users and to protect their investors. Uh, I'll let you go with any thoughts and uh, notes you want us to remember with insurers as, as we head into the weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, thanks so much for this the whole thing. And um, it's, yeah, I can, I, the only thing I can really do right now is is encourage, uh, you know, I, I've, <laughs> I've even been banned uh, by our founder from, uh, you know, staking on there because we want you know to build our community because the, our, the staking rewards are so good right now and we're literally on this, the last 25 percent. so this is the only uh chance you're going to have to um get that that extremely high yield as an initial stake because it's just our, our initial launch you know we're we're giving as much out to the community as possible so this this opportunity for staking right now with us is it's just it's such a it's, it's probably the, the staking opportunity of the week you know it's you'll have funds locked for 30 days but You'll be earning the entire time um, through that, and it's yeah. I mean, it's just something that I, I can't stop talking about for people to try and get involved in. It's got a minimum minimum investment of uh, one ETH or a thousand thousand dollar equivalent, um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, it's above fifty percent APY yield on it, so it's just such a, a great time to you know do something like this. Dan, congrats to you, Oliver, and the insurance team. Thanks, everyone, for participating. And uh, we'll have this recording on YouTube. And we'll see you at the next Sommelier AMA. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mario. Bye. Bye.